Today I'd like to talk a little bit about another option or method to generate corners. Now the methods that I'm talking about can be used across various CAD systems. I know one of my subscribers recently was asking me questions in regards to uh, alternative methods because he was having a hard time with a previous method that I discussed in Alias. So this method is just another way that you can go about generating your corners. And again, a lot of times those corners are going to be determined by a stylist, how they want the light to flow. So for this, I'm going to use initially um, some intersections. I'm going to intersect these two. And I'm going to intersect here and here. Whoops. Let me double click. There we go. Now that I have my intersections in place, I'm going to go ahead and create a couple of points that I need to generate this corner. So what's going to happen is, is I'm going to actually wrap this corner around go. so I need to basically mimic that shape with a frame, my curves. And this is 20. Now that I have that in place, I'm going to go ahead and generate my spline. I'm going to go from this point, this curve, to here, on support, and show parameters, and I want this to go curvature, and I'm going to up the tension. Next, I have to mimic this shape on this surface to get this to go up and around. Okay, because this, this blend is going to flow across here and around to here. To do that, um, again, make another spline. It's going to go from this point to this curve, wrapping around this point to this curve, geometry on support, and I will again mimic. what I have for the other curve. Now you'll notice that these are going to be curvature continuous. Now that I have that in, next I need to perform is create, uh, again I'm basically creating a corner, so I need to frame in that entire corner. And for that I'll use a couple of lines. And I'll go from this point up, geometry on support, this point up, and again, geometry on support. Let's go ahead and hide these. Now I'm going to generate a multi section surface. It's going to go from this section, tangent to this surface. Now for this, this is going to be a curvature continuity, and I can impose curvature in this direction because the guides come in and are curvature to this surface. I'm going to do the same thing over here, here, and that is curvature. For this guide, I'll pick U. Now this is not going to be able to be a curvature continuity. The most it can be is tangent. And the reason is, is this line doesn't come in curvature to this surface. If you were to generate a spline that did have a curvature continuity across, then you can perform that. In most cases, for this type of corner, especially for interior parts, curvature continuity is not even needed. And then I need to add another guide to this surface. And again, tangent is acceptable. Select my OK, and there is my surface. Now I'm going to throw some highlight lines. Actually, let me uh, let me do this. Let me split everything up, and then I'm going to throw some highlight lines on here so you can see what good looks like. There we go. Let's split number one. Split number two. And last. Let me hide these, and I'm going to actually let me split this as well, and I'll just hide all my curves and hide all my points. 
So as you can see, looks pretty good. I will put on some highlight lines. And now you can see those highlights come in and rather than just simply following one, it sort of splits off and it follows both nice and cleanly. And this is good because once again, I have, let me show my splines here, let me show this point, this point, and this spline. So if I come in and make any sort of modification to this, and select OK, and as soon as I fix this one, it'll update. The reason why it failed is the spline was coming in and switching around and coming off the surface. It was doing something, the spline was causing the fault with the multi-section surface. And then I can do the same thing with this spline. Maybe I want to change the tensions. Maybe I want to imp impose a higher tension on this because I want a, a loftier peak per se. So you can see I have all sorts of modifications that I can do to the surface. Now, same thing, I have these on as fillets. If I change the size of this, or the, the, uh, the conic shape, I have, once again, a fully parametric surface. Maybe in this case I wanted to change this to 0.6 or in, it increase the size of this as well. So as you can see, this shifted. Now, as this grows, you're going to start seeing little discrepancies as it flows across the surface. Again, this is tangent. In a lot of cases, this may be acceptable, and if it's not, what you'll have to do is you'll have to go through and recreate this curve with a curvature continuity across this point to the surface, and then you'll be able to generate a surface that's truly curvature continuous across all of those boundaries. In a lot of cases, this is an acceptable condition. Again, this is a sm if these are small corners, hidden, tucked away, this may be perfectly acceptable. Um, if it's, again, if it's not, you have to do some curvature continuity with these curves, the actual section curves to the adjoining surfaces.